Good evening. Um, sorry, this is Cat Ward. I'm not SPR Parascience Ghost Chronicles International. I'm just waiting on the man who has chosen to um for himself. I'll let you guys see. Sorry, there he is. Howdy. Yeah, I've been here for 10 minutes. I couldn't hear you. I, I've been calling out. I just used the toilet and and too much up my, <clears throat> top, sorry, TMI, and I topped up my stout. Cheers. Good. You've had your coffee? Well, bottoms up. I've had Red Bull, admittedly, so, you know, because I was half asleep. Uh, is, that, is that Guinness or coffee? Yes, Guinness. Guinness. Cool. Yes, the black Red stuff. Guinness. If a couple of billion Irish people are to be believed, it's apparently good for you, so Honestly. why the hell not? <laughs> now, women, so congratulations. Sorry? It, apparently it's only drunk by pregnant women so no they served it to everyone in hospital like uh, i wouldn't i i'm not a kid person i like them but in um, i'm sort of awkward with them you know i i'm okay with other people's kids but yeah i just i don't know it's a i don't i love i love very things <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm one of the who's and not I don't you know cats and dogs I've had cats and dogs and rats and and yeah I like snakes even I was I I've always been of the impression that you love your children but everybody else is a vermin <laughs> yeah um here in the hotel sometimes we had people that have rather feral children that they sort of let them loose in the restaurant and in the and sometimes in the bar and it's a bit unfortunate that it happens in it's a country pub so it's a different way of life than in the city i guess yeah but good lord now holy shit i've got a heap of questions i'm so sorry oh, um, well, let's start off with some corrections should we yes you were called apparently it says end stream so apparently we're live okay. are you streaming to anything no well we I'm are not. Yeah, we're streaming. To, I'm streaming to my um, personal profile. I can you can share to ASAP or wherever you want. Um, but yeah, um, I I I I'll just it's, do it. It's, Are you recording? It's, it's, sorry, is it being recorded? Yes, it is. It says oh. live. It says, "Hang on, in stream." Yeah, we're Let's done. Go. Let's go. No, it says it says everything's all cool it's exactly the way it worked before so it says says no, everything's all good that works this time now uh now your eg founder of creativity Inc. sorry i didn't know how to change that one right. <laughs> you're I'm actually not... founder of parascience uh, yeah i'm not the owner of parascience i co-founder oh, no, sorry and, and you're I... not the gold standard of ghost hunting no and I'm not the senior executive in the SPR. I'm a council. I'm member. sorry. What are you? You're what? Are you? I Ordinary there's so many council. committees. I have one of those two questions. I'm just How many Ordinary. body committees and organisations? And like ASAP has a a UFO one. I didn't even know there was a UFO one. I know there's MUFON, but I didn't know there was a UFO one in ASAP. What no, else is there? Know. Like the SPR had oh, how many originally? Six or seven? Actually, I'll turn my camera off because you guys don't need to see me. It's Steve's yeah, show. We but... Yeah, we do. Oh, my your hair go, looks like... If your camera goes... Yeah, look at mine. If your camera goes <laughs> off, so does mine. <laughs> well, you're free to you not know, use cameras in your show with Ron, though. And I mean, I'm, I'm, podcast. I'm, <laughs> I'm just getting over it being awkward. But yes, <laughs> I've no, got you as... Ghost Chronicles, the radio podcast. So it's yes. never had the video. And you only have an hour. Yeah, that's about as much of, of him as I can stand. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a nice guy. He's, I've never spoke to him before, spoken well, to him before. Because you're the guest in about two weeks. Am I? Well, yeah, okay. Because my mission is to fix up the date for you to come on today. Okay, well that's cool. We'll do that at the end. I'll get I'll get sorted with that at the end. Um, yes, but Lord, um, um, um parascience, um, parascience. Everyone, yeah. jump on parascience for God's sake! No, no, we, have, we don't update the website that often. Yeah, but you've got some good stuff on there. Oh yeah, but I mean, we are not a, a group that shouts about what we get on with doing. Yeah. 
you know, we go, mean, yeah. we're not, we're not, we've, we've always been absolutely rubbish at social media. Yeah, <laughs> I I know a marketing guy that you can use if you yeah, want, we to. want. We've had many many offers in the past, and I never had to, but you we, deserve it. Yeah. yeah, it's not really our style. Yeah, no. you know, it's like we never really embraced it. Um, yeah. So you know, it it is what it is. It's there as a, it's there. We yeah. can tinker with it, um, but no, not anymore. It's it's too crazy, you know. Both Anne, the other co Anne, Anne Winsper, the, the my co co founder, and yes, I. Yes, I haven't talked to Anne, Parascience. Yeah, neither of us are really, you know, active on social media. So yes. it's not something that, but yeah, people can go there. There's useful stuff on parascience.org.uk. Yes. Um, but it is what it is. Yes. There's some great stuff. I mean, I've got you on Facebook and I've got your website on. I think I'm, I th think I've got it on bookmarks as well. But good Lord, now social media isn't something I engage with a lot anymore. I've, I'm yeah, sort of disillusioned by it. Yeah, I can understand. I don't, you know, so, hey, look at me. I've, I've got a new cup of coffee. Hey, look at me. I've got a new cat. Hey, look at me. I'm. It. Going to the like, I mean, know. if I, I I share I shared a photo of me petting a lamb, but I like lambs, so you know I I've like put, lamb shops, but I like lambs. I've put the odd kitten on mine occasionally, <laughs> and we've got a ghost kitten as well <laughs> here in the in the apartment. It meowed a couple of times past few weeks, but it's good. Ball. You've got a cat trap uh, in the walls there. A what? Have you thought of checking the walls? You might have a cat stuck in the wall. No, it's we're on the second floor, and the walls downstairs are solid brick. There, two bricks thick. Mm, so it's, mm. it was built in eighteen eighty four. We've got one viewer, but there's there's never been a cat here. Hello, we, viewer, oh, whoever you are. Hello, viewer. Um, say hi. He um he doesn't bite. I was scared shitless of approaching you at first, but he I'm doesn't sorry. bite. Well, I mean, I was a newbie. I was. I was just getting into parapsychology and psychical research, and and you're Steve, goddamn Parsons, you know. No. Yeah, lots of people put the goddamn before the name, but no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But goddamn you, Steve Parsons, you're good. <laughs> yeah, they say that as well. Just the goddamn you, Steve Parsons. <laughs> I'll add the good in them. Awesome, actually, awesome. More fantastic or amazing, but. Um, where did you come from first? Um, you're you originally you're Welsh, aren't you? You came from somewhere in Wales, uh, or you live no, in Cornwall? No, Cornwall? I'm English. What? I'm proud of it. Oh, bloody hell! I get I everyone mixed up. I, I live in Wales now yes. because my yes. my wife is Welsh, and uh, my children are Wenglish. <laughs> but I'm I'm English. I was born near Chester. Yes. Just. And um, lived there for most of my life, and emigrated to Wales about fifteen years ago. Wow! And so, so um, I guess that would lead me to because I love everyone's different answers. I, I collect. Well, they all they all have a very strange accent down here in Wales. They all talk really funny. I love every. I'm a sucker for accents. <laughs> I love them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I try not to shout and I have to try to shut the bloody hell up sometimes. But <laughs> I tend to babble, plus I've had Red Bull, but um I'll try not to. Um have you got any memories of the unusual kind in your childhood? Um, you know, had had anything happened in your childhood to anyone in your family, in your towns? Had you no. heard anything? Did you have a local haunted house like I did? No, I as I said, uh, I, I I actually don't recall an interest in ghosts until my teen years. Yes. Um, so my childhood was fairly mundane, except for my love of aeroplanes, aircraft, aviation. That's what I do remember. Um, however, as I said, many, many times when your parents reach a certain age, when they start to tell embarrassing stories to anybody that will listen about you as a child, yeah. they started to say that from a very young age, from about four or five, um, whenever we went on holiday, 
I used to um, ask to go and look for the ghosts. I used to go to, uh, there was a, ho- a particular hotel in the town that we used to go on holiday to. And I used to pester the staff to go up to the top floor to look for the ghost. And um, apparently, according to my parents, I and a group of friends had a Ouija board in the garage where we <laughs> try to communicate with spirits, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and according to my mother, we lived in a house where the previous tenant was a bit odd. And I used to, I had an, an imaginary friend who I used to talk to at night. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't remember any of that. So it was either too horrific and it's been blanked from my memory. Yeah. Or... So you might have been a nice friend. From or, my, from or my you're young, so you could have been scared out of your mind. Well, I, you know, I, I, I remember getting the Guinness Book of Records and it had in it uh, the most haunted house in England. It was a picture, a little picture of Bawley Rectory. I didn't really know anything much um but it intrigued me sufficiently to go and pester the local library yes and managed to find a couple of harry price's books they interested me a little more and then it, it became a case of well i just wanted to see a ghost yeah you know how hard can it be all these people used to go to haunted houses sit on the stairs as it went dark and then the headless ghost or the white lady would just wander past and you go, oh, that's really cool yes. um so that was my approach at first, and then gradually you know, reality struck, and I realised it wasn't going to be that simple. Yes, uh, yes. But I then the bug had bitten. So <laughs> it, uh, I know I'm going to photograph a ghost. So one Christmas, I got a, I asked for a small camera, that was duly required. I'm, by this time, I'd read l- lots of the Peter Underwood books, Andrew Green's Guide to Ghosts hunting harry harry price's books and so you know i was i was unwittingly starting out on a path that would lead me 50 odd years later to where i am now holy wow christ on a cracker um yeah i'm sorry sorry you're a you're a you're a you're a um you're a certified priest sorry (laughs) christ on a cracker it cost me 25 dollars <laughs> uh, yes, I, go on. I can put Sorry. the Blessed Virgin Mary onto a slice of toast. <laughs> I have one of those magical stampers. <laughs> I don't have one of those. I've got a little glow in the dark light up ghost that changes colours. It'll it's a little battery powered thing. It flashes yeah. red and yeah, people, blue and blue. down the years people have bought me loads of these little and the family, you know, Christmas and birthdays. So we buy me these little little sort of cute ghosts and i just use them as decor they just sit around the house and oh, i've got gargoyles and no. i want to buy a rat skeleton uh, not a real one but a, you I'm, know, not, I'm not really interested in that you know like having lots of i'm uh, a grotesque person sort of thing I mean, you yeah, know but, uh, i love that stuff you know it's that time of year it's halloween and everywhere is I, <laughs> I used to have gargoyles in my garden. <laughs> well, I haven't. Um, I have some Lego Don't tell me you've got gnomes. No, I've got some Lego, we've got the Concorde and the space shuttle. Oh, yes, the Saturn V rocket. I've got some bombs, missiles, and stuff. Um, <laughs> there's a there's paranormal kitty just there lurking on the shelf. It's one of those boo bear type things up there. Oh, is that a cat? Oh, that's quite cute. I couldn't see it from there. I thought it was a. Uh, well, you, apparently, it detects I thought, if you stick I a thought it was a monkey. <laughs> it's a cat and um, it detects ghosts. And below it, it, it's sitting on the head of a cast of a Russian cannibalistic serial killer whose name I've forgotten. Oh, I. I've heard of, yeah, I've heard of that guy. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. They baffled the... Next to that, next to that there is some of the ghost hunting kit. And the Mm, rest... Oh, I can see at the edge of a black case there. I can see that in the bag on the top. A yellow one, a black one. And then there's there's about 30 more behind that flag. Shit. 
wow. <laughs> Holy wow. That was actually, I was, I was just actually going to ask about that. Now, um, what I was going to ask, um, when we, we've already covered what you got interested in the, into in the paranormal, what was the field like when you first stepped in? Were there many others in it? And, you know, were well, there other teams, groups? Uh, did you reach out to anyone? Clearly, you yes. Forward? Well, the SPR, and, the SPR and the Ghost Club certainly existed, and I was aware of them, but they were beyond, you know, they, they were like, I'm not, I'm not worthy. Um, and at the time, if I remember rightly, you had to be invited to become a member of the Ghost Club. Yes. You know, it, wow. wasn't, like, it wasn't like you could just sign up on, and join. Um, okay. So they were, they were something possibly to aspire to, you know, the, the elite world of uh, the academics and the, the, the ghost hunters. But I, God, um, it's in the mid 80s, 90s. It's a long time ago. Um, and there was there was a handful around the UK. Of course, because we didn't have the internet, um, yes. you didn't know what was happening around the UK. And so, although now I'm aware that there were groups, back then, as a teenager, I wasn't. So it was me and my mate Andy who, you know, used to go to, there was a haunted a farmhouse that looked like, you know, it had promise. There was a haunted windmill nearby. Uh, there was an old manor house that was used as a golf club that we um, begged and pleaded our way into with armed with a Kodak Instamatic camera and a tape recorder I got for passing my exams at school. Um, and that's how we started. And then it was some years later um, that I, well, actually, I, I at the time was the was helping out in the historian's role at a, an aviation museum. And a group of rather strange ghost hunters turned up one night uh, or turned up and said, um, we would like to investigate the ghosts. And, uh, well, you're going to be disappointed because there aren't any. But nevertheless, they they offered money. And as a charitable trust, you know, you don't turn down money. And because of my interest in ghosts, which was quite well known um, amongst friends, they said, oh, you can... You can stay and look after them then. Um, and ended up, I, I was very, you know, sort of a bit suspicious of what they were up to, but I ended up joining them. And that, that was where I met Anne, yes. now Dr. Winsper. And uh, we, those suspicions were, were founded uh, because the, the leaders of that paranormal group, um, Anne and I were what was known as the equipment section because, like me, Anne had a bit of a passion for gadgets. The tech guys. The tech guys. And yeah. whilst we never caught anything paranormal, we often caught members of the group doing things that they oughtn't to be doing by way and then claiming it was paranormal. So um, we got thrown out. And as a result of that, we decided if there was only if there was a, if there was going to be a proper way of doing it, then we had to use the scientific methods. Yes, uh, the stuff we were taught at school, you know, how to do science experiments. Yes, you yes. find a hypothesis, then go test it. Yes, I mean, you've... and and that was parascience, which is actually as you as you see the way the name is written, although misspelled yes. yours. Um, it's did it's, I spell? I did I put no no para and science. Both capitalized after the the full stop. Oh, reason I'm for that, the group's real name has always been paranormal science. Okay. But throughout the years, it, that's been forgotten and it's just become parascience. Okay. And that's because we couldn't write it on our very first uh, internet thing. We didn't have enough characters, so we abbreviated it. I tried to do spirit for my original one. Just spirit, the acronym. Um, but I didn't have of of the and it didn't let me, so I set up for spirit paranormal investigations. Yeah. And at one like point, that. we looked at other acronyms and we came up with the Wirral Anomalies team, but that's spelled twat, so we stopped that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, like a lot of teams, I mean, I'm really fortunate because when we found when we founded Parascience well, a long time ago. Um, 
30 something years ago um there was no real internet so and so all of our mistakes as we learned what to do are now long dead and buried yes so, how did you get yourself out there in that like how did you find people or did you you know how did you, you you've done field well, work i dare I, say you've done a lot a hell of a lot of field work so and still do and still do yes you still do i've got well, to ask you about that but later but yeah you how did you get yourself out there in that uh, well, we we took some of the other group with us when we when we were slung out, so that gave us a core. We decided that we wanted to do it properly, uh, yes. and to find cases. Well, obviously, we knew of some locations nearby that, because you know there are stories, there are local paper that reports, you know, and we we started knocking on doors. Yeah. And then gradually over the years, people started coming to us rather than us going to them. Yeah. Because yeah. we started to develop a reputation for being relatively straight, you know, sort of fair minded and, and objective rather yeah. than sensational. So have there been other members of Parascience? Like how many of there are you now? How many of you are there now? Sorry. There has never been more than. 10 or 12. Yeah, I've had I've had um, five or six or so. But so and membership has always been by invitation because it's it, we said because because the last group was so beset with committee and I hate committees and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I get confused. How many times have I made mistakes? Well, the, problem with, the problem with committees is they tend to spend more well, like with We're All Paranormal, the group that sort of led into parascience they would yes. spend more time arguing and squabbling over what was going to be on the front of front cover of that month's newsletter yes um rather than you know so many personalities involved that when we found in parascience Anne and i said look the main focus is the the research and the investigation yes. um, it's our group we founded it we will listen to what people have got to say and we will make the final decisions. And if you don't like it, leave. Yes. So it's always been run kind of as a benevolent dictatorship. You know, it's it, it, it's not like, I mean, that sounds even worse than it than reality because we are, a, we, you know, the team itself is quite closely knit. Yes. So we do, we do you know, but somebody has to make the final decisions. It's, it's sort of an accurate, it's, it's sort of an accurate way of terming it because sometimes, you know, I mean, if you want to be considered knowledgeable and approachable to people in businesses and private homes, then, you know, sometimes it needs to be, you know, not run like a military operation, but sort of with a little strictness at least. I mean, you know. We have standards and we have yes, standards. standards. Exactly and, rules. You know, we've had to, there's been a few people who were, you know, unfortunately, because we set it up the way it was, when when problems arose, then yes. we were able to deal with them and maintain the sort of harmony within the group by by removing, um, you know, any any thing that was causing a problem. Yes. I mean, there was there was a couple of people, and they, you know, to the to this day, they still investigate and they're very good at it but their methods were slightly different than ours they formed it and we suggested you know go off and form your own group and yes. they did you know so yeah i mean sometimes things just don't work out it's happened with my group a couple of times it's you know. a case of just like a quiet life you just don't gel sometimes and it just no, doesn't we, work. Anna and i just like a nice quiet peaceful life we don't like yeah. you know all this you know this idea of uh, parry unity, and um, we're all in it for the same thing. Absolutely, absolute rubbish. The it's so sad, though. It's 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 just so sad. I mean, Rachel yeah. Hayward had that project. Um, um, sorry, Karen, Besant had that project Project Genesis going, and you know that sounded good. Like minded groups working together, and it doesn't work. I know, but there's uh, that's that's really I. These I've made I hate the politics. I hate the egos and the backstabbing. And everyone, if they're properly trained and and if they're not spouting crap, then they deserve a voice. You know. We don't know. 
Um, well, I don't know. Well, I, I, years ago, I try and I just try and sort of. Yeah, but this idea of like regulating and and organizing and bossing people around and you've got groups squabbling over you know we have exclusive rights to this place and yeah just, i don't get it's that silly. it's silly you know it's like we're not all in it together we're not all in it for the same thing because i can assure you that the aims of parascience are very different from other groups who's you know i'm not knocking what they're in it for but they're not the same thing as us yeah. so you know this idea of and years ago asap tried to uh set itself up as the uk's official representative body for paranormal investigators well you can imagine that crashed and burned you know it, it's like go to, people in a lot of ways people you're dealing with people's fundamental beliefs because people believe in something they are passionate about what they believe in you know some people believe that we survive death and some people believe it's a load of bunkum but they're passionate and what happens is they start bickering and squabbling and falling out over stuff which drags more people in and then you end up with cliques forming little groups starting to and it just it just doesn't work it's little separate communities and i mean i'm planning um with um one of my guests um raven she and i if i secure locations i will timeshare um with her and she will she will you know she will let me in with her stuff and i will let her in on my stuff and i'm planning a timeshare and i'll do that with my mentor gary as well so you never had mentors in the field at all oh you did Field. yeah harry Oops. price andrew green oh Elliot oh you met them all no 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 they oh. mentioned through their writings oh i'm sorry and i had a very good science and physics teacher at school and there is nothing that we do in parascience that isn't high school physics level high school science you don't yeah. need to you know it's it's a science. It's not clever. It's just a methodology that we're all taught at school. Yeah. Yes. But the problem is a lot of people don't apply it. And, you know, I've always felt a little frustrated because academics tend to look a little bit down their noses at ghost hunters. Yes. And the reason for that is uh, one of credibility. Now, parascience has risen above some other groups because we followed the route of we we when we had a result we public we peer review you know we had it published for peer review yeah and we we you know we said look we're gonna show oh there's a comment sorry we've got a comment Hard luck. we've actually got a comment hello mark Wallbank. good morning <laughs> hello, good uh, I think it's an hour or two behind. It's he's in New Zealand. <laughs> so yeah. you know, for me, the frustration has been that in 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 lots of fields of amateur study, uh, like archaeology or astronomy, some of the yes. big advances, the big leaps in our knowledge and understanding have come from amateurs. Yes. Sitting in their back gardens, pointing telescopes at the skies yes. or digging through stuff. And then yes. they they present their results, the the learned academics come along and validate it or test it and it, it becomes part of accepted um yeah. mainstream but in paranormal investigation we we lack the credibility because even though and you know these investigators they have got access to some of the most interesting buildings with interesting stories oh, hell yes. they're going along um armed with bizarre pieces of equipment cat toys yeah. and, and bears yeah. and all sorts of other stuff um and they're using that you know all oh, the bear the bear's nose lit up well that's obviously proof of the paranormal oh the cat toy flashed well there's another you know yeah. they get more they get more compelling evidence for the existence of the paranormal in one night than the society of psychical research has managed in 150 years <laughs> But do you use those? Would you use those in experiments, oh. though? Like, yeah. like PK, though. I mean, do you think do you think we can affect them with our own energies? 
Well, the cat behind me was donated because we have a um, because I need to understand what this equipment does because I'm not going to be naive enough to say there's no such thing as a ghost detector because yes. someone might come up with something that can do something really amazing. So when I was going to you... ask what's your hypothesis on ghosts, what do you think they are, or do you have a pet one? Who's Hypothesis or theories? Do you like? I, mean, I love early SPR. I love Tyrrell. Um, you know Tyrrell's theory. Um, the carpenter yeah. and the um, set director, GNM Tyrrell. Tyrrell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I've read all that old stuff. Heaps of. I've read um, both volumes of human personality and um both volumes of bloody phantasms as well so i love all that stuff but yeah have you got any pet hypothesis or theories and or what's no. yours and or no. what ones do you particularly no i don't and the reason i don't is because if i did it would yeah. destroy my objectivity yes so yes true I, good point I, whilst I, I i have ideas and i might by observation, develop hypothesis, which I can yes. then simply test. Because no, yes. there's no point in developing a hypothesis that you can't test. Yes. Um, so, but if I had, or if I imposed my own views or beliefs onto what I do, then objectivity would be the first victim. And that would mean that I might miss something significant or important because it didn't conform to what I was looking for or what I was expecting to happen. Yeah. So yeah. rather like a, a crime scene investigator or a detective, you yeah. go in with no fixed notions. Expectations. Yes. You, you try. And it, it's easy to say, but it's incredibly difficult to do because we are, after all, human beings and yes. frail and fragile. Um, but you try to set aside your your own expectations, beliefs, ideas, opinions. Um, you leave them at the door and you go in completely open minded. So, I, yeah. you know, I, I, yeah, fully accept, yeah. I, I completely accept that ghosts might be the returning spirits of the dead. And yes. I also completely accept that they might just be a figment of our imagination. But what I do know is that the truth is somewhere in between those two parameters. Yes, I think I think Where, and I don't know what a ghost is because nobody does. Nobody does, exactly. Um there um, are many definitions of what a ghost are, and most of them are wrong. Yeah, I mean like, I, I dictionary yeah. one, uh, which says that it's the spirit or the apparition of a returning dead person, well, it falls flat in its face because there are ghost buses and ghost aeroplanes. <laughs> and ghost ships and um, cursed yeah. pools and cars <laughs> and and cursed ships and cursed ob apparently cursed well, objects. Cursed objects are different because... I, yeah, I, I don't know about that. Uh, Lloyd talked about I, that. I'm surrounded by the... Talked about, um, I don't know, some something about cursed objects and well, you know, got, James Dean's car and everything like that. And do you remember the um, crying boy? Yes, the painting that was the something in the paint, wasn't it? That made it catch fire. Was it something in the paint or the material that would have that it was painted on? Was well, something that made it flammable, uh, that made it not burn, sorry, inflammable? It had, it, sorry, it, flammable, in it, not flammable, it, not it inflammable. Had, it has a reputation, yes. and I have to say, fortunately, although it's right next to the fire extinguisher, mine is my little crying boy is behaving himself, along with my haunted doll and other <laughs> cursed objects and haunted <laughs> objects that, that line the, the shelves in here. Um, because it, it's like this belief in Ouija boards. It, it's interesting in the UK, um. You can't just wander into a toy store and buy a Ouija board. You can't hear either. You can't in the USA, either. you can. I've never tried. But in the USA, you can go into Toys R Us or a toy store in a mall and you can buy a Ouija board. But what's interesting is um, over here in the UK, you are much more likely to encounter groups using spirit boards, Ouija boards during their investigations than in the USA, where you hardly ever see them being used. And I mean, originally, um, 
Aiton Farrow taught me this in his chat with Kenny Biddle, that they were a ro romantic game originally. So why the hell is the Zozo it, bit? It, because, you know? of, because of Hollywood. But it, Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the guy on your... <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I've got a fair collection of, I think there's about 30 Ouija boards um, hanging up behind. Anyway. I see that one. It's an old one. Some of them were uh, were given to me because they were so feared. I remember uh, I once ha uh, was a friend of mine had has a new age shop, and uh, one of one of the options that you could have is you could have a uh, reading with a psychic, tarot, all that sort of new age stuff. And uh, one one day while I was in there. Uh, a, a consignment of Ouija boards arrived for sale. And this, one of the, the readers, uh, let, just, you know, she said, unless they're, unless they're taken out of this shop, I, I, you know, I'm never going to return here again. And I can sense the evil in these things. I, I just know when they're around me. Well, they were, they were got, got rid of, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and she came back the following week and there was none in sight. And she had a very, you know, she had a busy morning, people coming in, giving her money and having their psychic readings. And and then at the end of it, I said to her, um, how did it go? Oh, shit, it was a brilliant day. Should um, Mrs. Blah, 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 and that lady. Blah, blah. I said, did you not sense anything? But all the energies were really... So, so you didn't sense the Ouija board that was taped underneath the underneath the <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, there is an easy test, isn't there? She yeah, can, the claim is she can sense the presence of a Ouija board anywhere in a room that she's in. So I'm gonna put one there to see if she if, is that just BS or is it you know, is there some validity in what she's saying? It's, it's like when we worked on on, on one of the TV documentaries the the tv psychic i won't name them but they that's what i was gonna say what have you been on and we'll, yeah, get, to we'll get to that we'll get to that we'll get to that but the, <laughs> the very prominent you know in britain they would know who it was a tv psychic um yes. while we were checking it uh traveling up said that they can you know we were talking about what you know how they experience stuff and they said that they can never switch off so immediately they walk into a place, you know, if it's haunted, they know immediately. So with a little bit of um, behind-the-scenes magic, we had them booked into the, ho the, the haunted room of the hotel, um, which, you know, according to the stories, guests have to check out in the middle of the night and... And at the end of the week, this person had had a lot of lovely sleeps and had sensed nothing. Again, you know, it's an easy thing to test. Yeah. You know, if you're making, and I, there was, I was, I was hearing of a, a lady just yesterday who said yeah. that every night at exactly the same time, a certain series of strange events happen. So you can guess where I'm going to be tomorrow night at a certain time. Because it's, a, again, it's an easy... What strikes me, is always struck me as being odd. Um, you know, the family will, will... or The ghost is supposed to do something at a particular time in a particular room. So the ghost hunters all arrive and then yeah. stay there all night. Yeah. <sighs> but nothing happens. And, of course, they're not always at night. They're not... Yeah, well, you know, that, that, I, I want to do stuff during the day and there well, because there's sometimes, you know, I shadows and stuff happened at Castle Main Jail to me during the day. Like I I that was um Gary and I heard whistling and Do you know why I love getting them ghost hunting? Huh? Do you know why I, do you know why I love so much daytime ghost hunting? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Because Go ahead. you don't have to stay up till stupid o'clock in the morning. I'm a, I'm actually <laughs> I'm a... <laughs> you know come midnight I want to go to bed you know it's like 
I can understand that. I'm a night owl here in town now that I'm here. I'm a night owl on um, our apartment. I wish I could show you out the window here. Um, I'll take photos. It's the, it's foggy at the moment because it's maybe getting cold and it's warm inside. But um, it looks over to the main street and the, 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 there's a bakery. And I love to watch the smoke or the steam coming out of the chimney when the bakers start their work in the morning. And I'll sit and I'll have coffee and I'll talk to the plants and water them and go in and say hello to the spiders that we've got in the bathroom. Yeah, that's why I've never set foot in Australia. They're, they're harmless. They're they're not the bad ones. They're, they're, not they're harmless. I've seen them. No, they're not spiders. They don't bite. They don't move. I'm not scared of them. I don't mind the banana spider because that looks just big and stupid. Uh, well, they do look kind of dumb, but huntsmen's they move. I don't like those. And we have the Sydney Sydney funnel web, and that's a nope spider. That's a big time nope spider. Well, um, yeah. that's one of the deadliest in the world. I, I think there is a good These argument. are house spiders. They're large black females. And I haven't given them names yet. I still haven't come up with something. I don't know. Maybe I'll call them something ironic like Satan and Beelzebub or something, you know. <laughs> I think spiders are best dealt with with a flamethrower or a hand grenade. <gasps> Oh, I, I try to I try to save bugs that fall in the sink. <laughs> but oh good lord, God, where were we? Jeez. We could I I haven't I, this is only the second time or third time that I've actually talked to you. Um bloody hell. Um early early casework. We were on early casework, weren't we? Ages ago. Um have you had anything that turned out to be genuine and anything that turned out to be misinterpreted? Most of like, them turn out to be misinterpreted. Yes, but has there anything that you can't fit? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, you know, there's if people go to the Parascience website, there's, there's, I mean, down the years, and there's been a lot of years and a lot of places, yeah. uh, I can still count on the fingers of two hands the number of times when we've encountered something truly perplexing. And I think that's about right because, you know, the paranormal shouldn't be an everyday occurrence. It shouldn't be, you know, like social media, we, you know, Facebook Live and or television where, you know, the world of the demons and everything else is, is careering in on you. It yeah. is, it is, you should be able to reasonably, and when I say reasonably, a skeptic can debunk anything. They can, you know, they can, there is no amount of um, proof that, they would would satisfy them but there comes a point where a reasonably minded fair-minded investigator would have to conclude well we've looked at everything that we can possibly consider there may be things that we're unable to test because <laughs> we can't it's too expensive or the technology mm. doesn't exist yet yeah. um so at the moment we can't explain it yeah I mean, I've never said this place is haunted. I've never said that was a ghost. I've, as I say, on about a 10, nine, 10 occasions said, I am completely bewildered and baffled and I cannot offer any explanation as to what happened. Um, on what occasions? And like, is there any details well, that you can Well, give? I mean, one of the most... One because of the I ones, love shit. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> One of the one of the the ones that I, for me, is possibly the most perplexing. Okay. Um, happened. Well, there are two. One one I was sole witness to, and one that was a double witness, um, which is, I suppose, yeah. compelling. Um, but I, I used to work That's as a nurse. Cool. I used to work as a nurse, and I'd been yes. off for a couple of days. Went in. I was on duty at night. Um, I knew all of the 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 residents of the twilight home for the criminally bewildered um and was it its actual name what was that its actual name no it's what i called it oh <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry that's actually a cute name but yeah, yeah i don't think it's fly the twilight home for the criminally bewildered <laughs> it's actually quite cute it's better than criminally insane it makes them sound like jason voorhees or something for god's sakes mm. Have you seen a dementia? Some patient? of them were. Some of them were. I've been in asylum, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I there'd been an agency nurse on duty for a couple of days um, whilst I've been away, 
And yeah. there's no point in the agency nurse giving me a handover because I know them. The agency nurse doesn't. Yes. So I said, I said, look, you know, get yourself off, and I'll just pick up with the diary and catch up on anything that's um, yeah. changed. So she toddled off. I, my first duty was always uh, to start at the top floor and then work my way down, make sure everything was where it should be, people were where they should be, that the residents were comfortable, warm, blah, 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 whatever needed doing. And on the second floor, um, we had a married couple in adjoining rooms. Yeah. And it was, it was custom to put them yeah. to get to to move hubby in with his wife every evening so they could have a cup of coffee yeah. and you know then they both go back to their bedrooms and if yeah. we were bit, if we were a bit late because maybe something had happened uh, or we were dealing with somebody else then hubby would often you know go go wandering and go in you know set off on his own uh, to see his yeah. wife so I came down, came down off the stairs and he is got his back to me about seven or eight feet in front of me, toddling down the corridor. Perfectly normal. Absolutely. You know, nothing unusual at all. He was perfectly solid. He was as real as. Anybody. Yeah, there was nothing unusual about it. So I said to him, if you if you pop back to your room, I'll um, I'll get someone to come up and. Um, yeah. Bring it bring up the cocoa and he oh. half turned, he half turned and said oh i'm just going to say goodbye to elsie which was his wife yeah and i continued on my way because it was perfectly normal when i got yeah. down to the staff room because the staff handover was still taking place yeah the the other staff um yeah. i was i was nurse in charge so i you know if there were any jobs needed allocating so i said but right before we start uh can somebody pop um, his name, we'll call, let's call him Ernie. Can someone pop Ernie in with Elsie because he's he's already halfway down the corridor? Yeah. And, we don't have a call. and they yeah. look like uh, I said, sorry, am I speaking Spanish? Uh, yeah. And one of you um, go and put Ernie in with Elsie, please. And again, they they looked at me and went, "Are you are you making a joke?" And I went, "No." You see these blue epaulets on my shoulder? That means, yeah with me so can one of you do that and i'll go sort out you know, the, the, med, the meds drug drug round um, yeah to, but he died two days ago sorry i just did your title <laughs> sorry go ahead they said he died two days ago oh i said well you better tell him that because he's walking down the corridor oh so now i thought they were playing a prank on me so yeah. I left, went down to the clinic room, started doing the meds, checked the diary because he's on the list of, you know, to get medications. And indeed, he had had the misfortune of dying two days earlier while I was off. Oh. Um, well, so they all now everybody thought everybody was pranking the other one. They thought I was playing the trick on them. I thought, you know, I, I now realise that they were telling the truth. And yeah. we all just went about um, do what we normally do. Looking yeah. After, looking after the residents. Until uh, it was it was practised to every hour, more or less on the hour, we would each sort of split up and go to different floors and, you know, make sure that they were all where they were supposed to be and nobody was wandering and nobody was in need of any attention. Um, so we started to do that just after midnight and there was an almighty scream and a running of feet downstairs. Oh, yeah. And so I went quickly to the bottom of the stairs to find out what all the fuss was about as one of the other staff said i'm not staying here a minute longer ernie is is in the corridor i went well i did tell you <laughs> so that was quite, that was you know that was that was fairly interesting seeing he was sort of harmless i gather like he didn't well, do it what was interesting is he didn't appear unusual you know was yeah. he was he you know and then uh, on another occasion myself and Anne 
and Dr. Yeah. Hannah Winsper. We yes. were trying to get a picture of a haunted bedroom at a Welsh castle up in North Wales. Yes. And uh, the only people in the castle on that occasion, because it was quite late in the year, I think it was late November, early December, was yeah. the, the owner and his wife. Um, because it's also their home. They live in this 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 castle. And they they were renovating it. And there was so there was a sign that said no photography. So we we hung around like a bad smell outside this room, trying to wait for them to go back to their half of the castle so yeah. we could we could take a picture. Yeah. And we're standing at the bottom of a blocked staircase that's got no stairs in it, it's just an empty shell where some stairs had been. And above us is um, a largish room with wooden floors. And we, we we were both surprised to hear someone walking, quite distinctly walking around in this room above us. Awesome. We, we looked up the gap through where the stairs were and we saw the bottom half of a person cross the staircase. And immediately both of us realised that well, both of the owners are at that end of the building. We're the only other two people in the castle. So, wow. who, so who's that? Now, the room was accessible by another staircase just around a corner. So it was like four feet away, just but around a corner. Yeah. So we both immediately went up the stairs into the room, which was empty. There was no other exit. Well, if there had been somebody in the room, they had two options. The first option is they would have passed us because it was yeah. the only exit and entrance to the to the room. Yeah. Or, or they could have jumped out of the window and landed 75 feet below on the ground, which I don't think they did. So um, that was quite perplexing too. <laughs> wow. Well, well, stuff happens, you know, and you accept that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, weird stuff's happened to me, but I mean, I'll save that for, you know, if I'm yeah. be on your show, I'll save that for, because I've had some weird stuff happen at asylums, and I worked in a nursing home, and I heard coughing there at, at a couple of times, because I, I used know, to... I don't know a single nurse who, who doesn't have a haunted story. Yes. Not one. Every single yes. nurse I know has got yes. some stories. Everybody I know that's worked in nursing homes or hospitals has got a story. Yeah. I mean, mostly mostly for me, it's not been bad stuff. The main thing I'm scared of is bloody spiders that move. And um, there was a time I stood on an anthill in the yard of an old ward for the, the criminally insane, but that was unfortunate. But that was about it. <laughs> Most of it's been pretty benign, you know. There's a very effective way of, you know, you said spiders that move. Yes. Flamethrower? Hairspray. Oh, no. They, oh, they run for a few more, they run for an inch and then stop. I, my ex's mother uses detergent on cane toads because they're quite toxic, you know, those, they're quite um, they have they race cane toads here. <laughs> They're quite I live in the UK, we haven't got anything nasty. Um, Aussies will bet on two flies crawling up a wall, so they actually have cane toad races here. Well, I'm fortunate we live in the UK, the you might get stung by a wasp occasionally. Oh, uh, I hate those. I they, yeah, they, I don't do wasps, but oh, good lord, where was I? Oh, bloody hell, now we've gone into that. Um, um. Can we talk about um some of the um have you got any any pictures or any anything that you can I can let you share your screen of anything that are good or bad examples of unfortunately the only pictures of me are on my only fans page. Um yeah. I what's that one called? Oh I'm sorry, no, it's an only fans. I don't do only fans. I thought it was a Steve Parsons fans page on Facebook. Yeah, me and my dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> um, in, short, in short, if there's, I think there's one photo and some audio recordings. If you go to parascience.org.uk and have a have a crawl through there. Yes. Um, but no, because and the reason I won't share a lot from investigations is because client confidentiality is paramount. Of course, of course, I wouldn't have. have you so know, I mean, there was. 
something like yeah. that, that you know you know but groups don't think about this they're, they're so excited yeah. you know, say oh can't wait for tonight guys we're going yeah. to a private house case that's and then they put a load of photographs that takes about and of course with a modern smartphone your photographs are geotagged and yeah. it takes, it takes oh. about 30 oh. seconds to figure out where the place is i so, know and i don't i don't really unless i have permission i wouldn't do that you know no. i would wait and until but we are not in that we are want, but only for you know if they need further help from someone else and i can't help them sort of thing well parascience are not in the business of promoting ourselves or somebody's yeah. house i know. i never was but yeah so, you know in short the ones that we have um put up are ones that um we have you know permission to but yes. and they're quite you know, and then we just stop doing it because, as I said, uh, as, as I said before, the social media side of it, we're rubbish at. And we're not really interested in, you know, it's not a hey, look. at. In fact, Parascience is probably the only paranormal team in the UK that doesn't have a T-shirt or a, a logo or a, um, a, a fleece or a hoodie or a, because if anybody in there is there is a rule in Parascience. If you turn up wearing a Parascience hoodie or T-shirt, you're fired. <laughs> I've got to admit, I have shirts, but I, I, yeah, I like the. I don't know. I might get one with a cat in the shadows on it, like my. You know, I mean, why I not? It's a cat. Everyone likes cat shirts. I don't have any any problem with groups that want to sort of bond together and use that as their identity, and you know, if it if it helps their yeah. group dynamic, it's yeah. just. It just doesn't sit comfortably with me around, and so we, yeah. we don't do it. It's you know we don't we don't have we don't shout about who we are and what we do. We just quietly get yeah. on and do it. Yeah, yeah, you go about that sort of thing. Um, um, past cases, I guess. What have, what cases from the past have stuck with you? I've heard a lot about the you know the Cheltenham ghost case. That's a famous yeah. one. Yeah, that's yeah, but I mean, there are a lot of famous ghosts. I, I know that's one of the. I've I had a few that stuck with me. Um, the case of the Wilmots fascinates me. The I, guy on the ship and his wife, and we don't and, get excited about stuff that we can't look at because yeah. the Cheltenham case. What was it, eighteen ninety something? Ah, um, uh, yeah. You know, it it's you you. you you can pick over, and a lot of people are doing that now with en with the Enfield Poltergeist because it's topical. There's a movie coming out, there's a stage play, um, but unfortunately, so for me, I get excited about the lady that phones me up and says, "Weird stuff is happening in my house. It's happening right now." I love that. I love hearing I, that. I don't get excited. About, uh, if I can help, Ooh, what was that? Uh, light rain soon expected to starting your location in 15 minutes uh, uh, <clears throat> so i you know there are people that have got enormous collections of ghost hunting gazetteers you know the ghosts of norfolk the ghost of minneapolis the ghosts of edinburgh they don't really interest me much um, do you want to see those places though that are in the books or because I, I do I, I love old houses and old I mean, architecture I always love I love historical can I buildings. actually can I mute my mic for a second I've got to go um yeah um sorry um can I just mute my mic <laughs> what what people don't realize ladies and gentlemen is that cat is now breaking wind I can hear you. But she doesn't want us to realise that she's breaking wind, so she's going off camera. And uh, right now she's she's off to have a quiet fart. And then we will return with part two. What we should have done is broken this down, actually, so I can go and get a cup of coffee while she, while she while the cat goes and breaks wind. <clears throat> if you want to hear more of this rubbish, actually, um, you could always go to Ghost Chronicles, Ghost Chronicles International, which goes out live on a wednesday night 11 p.m uk time which i think is 6 p.m eastern whatever daylight standard time there on it's five hours behind the uk anyway um with myself and my co-host ron kolak who is 
touts himself as New England's own Van Helsing. And it's been my pleasure to be a co-host with him on Ghost Chronicles uh, International for since 2012. And uh, it's it's two grumpy old men talking about the paranormal with the occasional guest. Um, but it, it it it's not your average podcast because, well, hey, why would it be? It's two grumpy old men. Um, I don't know. That must be one hell of a fart that she's having right now. And then you get invited on to do these things. And then what happens is the host buggers off. And leaves you to it. I'm back. I'm back. You feel better now. I had to get myself another glass of stout. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what you tell the listeners, the viewers. I was getting a dry throat for God's sake. Plus, I had to TMI, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Red Bull and stout. Thank God this isn't smell o vision. Oh. I resemble that, as W.C. Fields would say. I think it was him anyway. <laughs> anyway. No, oh, no. Where were we? Where were we? You were... Um, I have no idea. Um, um, you have to go um, move on, though, because I've got to go and gone soon. We were talking... Sorry? So we're going to have to get a move on, because I'm wait, I've got to go out and collect a new gun soon. Oh, Jesus H. Good. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Um, good Lord. Um, detail some of your stuff with Cal. Um, um, your work with ASAP and what do you do at the SPR? What are you in charge of it? Right. Everything. Okay. <clears throat> so which, which order do you want me? Cal and I, I've known Cal since he was, um, well, a wee tacker. I think before he, he reached puberty. Um, <laughs> wow. He turned up at an SPR conference and he was an irritating little. <laughs> he, he, he just started as a psychologist and he was, you know, he was doing his first year at uni and he was, you know, he, he was very keen and slightly annoying. Um, that has grown into a very strong friendship. We've written a book together. We've worked on a number of media um and ghost hunts together uh, for charity and such and i count him as one of my you know one of my good friends but my very, were... my very first impression of him was oh god he's an irritating little shit <laughs> um, you're working on another one with kel too i am i am we wrote paracoustics together um so we both contributed towards the first half and then we had contributed authors because there's no point if you're writing about something you want to the specialist on but you know yes. who the specialist is then get them to write the bloody thing um yes. which is what paracoustics which was sound and the paranormal so it, it covers all aspects of sound related to the paranormal and um we always had the plan to do um others follow-ups looking so the next one paravision strangely enough covers all of the visual aspects of so photography and apparitions and, and video camera. camera and stuff like that well, a whole range of anything to do with the visual senses um yes. so that will come out in 2024 probably awesome. towards i'll autumn. have my bookshelves <laughs> probably towards the autumn but we've got to finish the manuscript by the end of december this year because <laughs> We we've got to sort out, you know, it's got to be proofread and edited and yeah. Um, yeah. So. And actually talking on we were you touched a little on audio stuff and video stuff back then. Do's and don'ts when you're doing an EVP session. I mean I have I have rules. Oh, I don't yeah. like I don't like my team wearing thongs, you know, flip-flop sandals, because you know the ch -ch 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 noise gets annoying. And well, I don't like I, 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 whistling song. because yeah, what if you thought, no, you're not there. You know, what if you noise thought, when people wear thongs? Um no, not not, not the not the lot not the other ones. Um you you said know, the, I banned my the, from the flip flop sandals, the shoes. Oh, I know what you mean, but we wouldn't call them thongs, they're different. Uh, what do you call them? Flip flops. Ah, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but anyway, I don't think we're I have, thongs. I have never banned any of our team from wearing thongs. Each to yeah. the right, you know. Oh. So the oh, was and, because nowadays, now well, with modern technology, one has to be careful. We were doing a documentary with a Japanese film crew. Yes, this yes was, that was one you worked on recently. No, no, this is the, the oh. first one we did with the Japanese, which was about 20 years ago. And they arrived yeah. with the big budget documentary crew. Yeah. And they 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 said, oh, what sort of stuff do you think we would need by way of technology? So we yeah. gave them a long list of things that we wanted. Yeah. And that included the hire of, and this was long before it was ever seen on television. Um, we wanted yeah. a... 30,000 pound thermal imaging camera system. Um, and these things were big and heavy. You know, this, the camera, it was massive. Um, and it wasn't like hard. a clear thing or something? Huge, even bigger. Um, this what? thing was probably came off a helicopter. Anyway, uh, they hired it for us for the duration of the documentary. Yeah. And this was in the days before handheld thermal imaging. Yeah. And, uh, that was the only occasion when we wish we had um, made some rules about what people were wore, because what we didn't realise at the time, although we 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 knew a little bit about thermal imaging, is that um, whilst it can't make clothes see through, yes, it can allow a lot of what's beneath the clothing to become partially visible. Oh. Yeah, oh. and we realised that certain one of our team um, was wearing uh, a tracksuit, shell suit. Yeah. And beneath that, I mean, it looked fine. It was a lovely dark, dark blue tracksuit. Yeah. But perfectly acceptable when the lights were on. But under the thermal imager, um, we quickly realised he'd gone commando. Oh! <laughs> Oh, I never actually got it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I'm, I'm jackets. That, I mean, those that the plastic was jackets and the, you know, the noise they make. The sh 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 it's just annoying more than anything, I guess. But um, yeah. And the and the chicken noise, you know, the you, if you walk with the audio That's, recording. Well, chicken, chicken, well chicken. you know, there are there are certain things that we've learned along the way. Um, yeah. One of the one of the things that we 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 our team have some equipment. Yes. And one of, and that individuals in the team have some equipment. Uh, some of it's specified by us. You 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 must have this 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 and this. Yes. And everybody was up with, um, one of the requirements is that people had a portable audio recorder. Yes. Um, now that's not used for recording EVPs. That was to record sounds that you could hear, because yes. if, if you can hear it, you know, record it, verify it, blah blah blah. Yes, um, and it, it, they've they've proved useful down the years. But on one occasion, we learned an, an important lesson. Um, yes. There was a report because our team make make notes of what they observe and what they notice. Yes. Uh, that on on reviewing one of the recordings, um, there seemed to be the sound of running footsteps down a, down a flight of wooden stairs. Yeah. So we were intrigued. Luckily, we'd had a camera positioned on looking at that staircase. Hmm. So we went back to look at the... Um, we looked at the other team's notes, the other pair's notes, yeah. and nobody else had reported this, this sound. Uh, or, or indeed anything at all. So there was this single report of running footsteps or the yeah. sound of running footsteps. So we looked at the video footage and we noticed that the pair at the top of the stairs had dropped a pencil, a simple lightweight wooden pencil. Ah. The pencil had bounced its way down the stairs <laughs> and the recorder that was sitting at the bottom of the stairs had recorded it not from the microphone but through the case. Wow, the same as you get that noise when you when you hold a recorder and you know. Um, yes, it was. But because it, because it was sitting on a on a hard wooden surface, that yes. noise had been kind of amplified and changed. 
so we we went to the local uh, pound shop yes. and we bought a big bag of bath sponges and we gave every member of the team a bath sponge and yes. we said from now on when you put your recorder down you put it down on a bath sponge that's an awesome idea and that stopped it so that's a really good idea um oh. are there I any mean, other good tips for good audio recording because i was going to actually ask you this about audio recording, good and bad stuff you know yeah buy the best equipment you can and don't forget to spend some money on the microphone there yes. is no point in having a 300 uh audio recorder yes connected to a 15 microphone and the FLIR cam can we talk can we touch a little we'll on that? that but but you know i'll give you another yeah as you say yeah. you need Sorry. The role of an investigator is to test the claims that are being yes. made by yes. the witnesses. Yes. And on one occasion, um, one of the claims was that a door would move slowly. It would open or close. Now, you could get one of your very expensive video systems and set it up on the door or both sides of the door so you can see that nobody's shoving it from the other side. Yeah. Um, alternatively, you could do what we did. Uh, we taped a piece of paper to the floor and we taped a pencil to the bottom of the door so that if the door moved, it drew a line on the piece of paper. So we could what? actually measure how far and which way it was moving. Wow. You know, why that... make it difficult for yourself? That's seriously innovative. And, and I was going to talk about, um, <laughs> what, you know, what other experiments? I mean, do you use old school and new school stuff? I dare say you do. Do you use old school audio and new stuff old, as well? Well, when you say old and new, um, what's it? Old school, old, those old blocky tape recorders that look like, um, oh, you know, yeah. like You've read, you, you mentioned Tyrrell before in some of the early... And reel-to-reel -reel ones and that sort of thing. Do you have a reel-to-reel? -reel? You mentioned Tyrrell and some of the yes. early researches, and you, you touched on EVP. All yes. of the original and most interesting recordings and yes. experiments were done using analog devices, so film cameras and magnetic tape recorders. Yes, then in the in the two thousands we hit the digital revolution with mini discs and DATs and all the yeah. digital stuff, and all of the tape based and film based analog systems were just thrown aside. Yeah. They piled up in thrift stores and in car boot sales. Yeah. We never we never retired ours because we we didn't know whether. Was digital better? Yes. Or was analog better? So we use what's most appropriate. Yeah. Well, like, we... For example, an analog recorder records simply an electromagnetic representation of a sound wave from the microphone. So an electrical yes. signal comes from the microphone and is faithfully turned into a magnetic signal on, on a roll of tape, yes. a reel of tape. Whereas with digital, it's sampled, it's converted, it's back sampled, it's back converted. Um, and so it gets changed during the process. Yes, that's what I was asking about that with those. So, yeah, with we that use a lot of like digital, but we still have analog systems, film mm -hmm. and magnetic tape systems as well. Um, yeah. But we don't, we, we hardly ever use any equipment at the start of an investigation. And then, yeah. Because if you go to a, hey, my house is haunted, uh, yeah. you turn up with, you know, a truckload full of stuff and you spend yeah. three hours setting it all up. And uh, yeah, what you end up with is a lot of stuff, a lot of recordings. Um, a lot of dead air, so to well, speak. Well, no, it might not be the right thing. Well, might, yeah. Um, so when the witness says, we see an apparition, then you would we would naturally prefer video and photography yeah. if people say you know we, we the temperature changes then we don't need video cameras what we need are thermometers so yeah. we only measure what's appropriate yeah um, so we, we would arrive with a very basic set of equipment at the start so there'd be a recorder for recording interviews 
and a camera for recording um, viewpoints. So if the witness says, you know, we, when we sit here, we can see this, we take a picture, you know, from a similar, so that we have an understanding you know, when you go back, you can you can sit and you can you can have an understanding of what it is that they say that they can see. Yes. Um, then, based upon what they tell you, then you would perhaps deploy equipment because equipment uh, can be used to verify and to objectify the claims of the witness. What, because what you're doing is you're testing the claim. You know, I saw a ghost. Um, it walks down the corridor at 8 p.m. every night. Well, like with the Ouija board, you get there at 8 p.m. or before, and you see if if indeed that claim is true. Yeah. And, and you see what that's just good science. There might be an environmental condition going on at the same time every well, night. Don't make a big deal of all these, you know, infrasound. Oh, it must be infrasound. It must be. Well, actually, I was going to ask about that about the hum because. You said something about that years ago, and I can hear it. It cheats some me. Can, some people can't. We yeah, but is the infrasound, what is it? What it, I mean, there's a ton of theories. What is it actually? Well, or what do you? What is in your opinion? What is? Well, it's no it, opinion. I and I can't, you can't get rid of it. But. I can give you absolute fact. Infrasound is sound. It is nothing more than sound, but it's at a frequency that our ears don't register. Yes. However, our bodies and our brains do. Yes. But because we don't consciously hear it ordinarily, yes. um, there are exceptions. But we, when we don't hear it, we sort of get a little bit where you are now and where I am. There is a lot of infrasound. And I can yes. prove that. I can bring our infrasound measuring stuff out and, and I can show it you. I can demonstrate it. Yes. Yeah, but we're not we're not sitting here going. Oh, this room feels really spooky. But if you take that weird sensation that infrasound can, for some people, yeah. call, and yeah. you take them to a haunted building and you say, "Oh, you know, the ghost it likes to," yeah. well, you then add infrasound to yeah. expectation and to suggestibility. Yeah, you so you kind of trip the dominoes. Yeah, for me, it's, it's completely it's been traveled everywhere with me for the past nine or ten years now. It annoys In that case, you've possibly got a, an unusual form of tinnitus, it, a low pitched one. It's like a rumbling. Yeah. Thing. There is, there is, um, in fact, I uh, and there was a theory that people can hear radar as well. Um, some people, that, some people can are, are sensitive to electromagnetism and it can manifest radar towers or something. Well, it can that manifest. Itself, depending on and this is quite a well-known thing if you back in the days of amalgam tooth fillings yes um in a in a warm salty environment you can get a weird transmission transmission of acoustic effect um, wow. caused by the fillings in your teeth vibrate or resonating Ooh. electromagnetically with the radar or the radio and you can hear because of bone conduction yes uh, you can actually hear the sound of things like radar oh that actually sounds kind of nasty because i mean um <laughs> there's this there's this guy there's a geologist or a biologist his name is david deming or deeming i'm not sure how, how it's pronounced but he's actually got a map of people that have logged in and shared that they've heard stuff from everywhere from antarctica to bloody mongolia which is it's just it's annoying as crap but anyway flare camera we've got it because i know you've got to go and get a gun and probably blast the crap out of bunny rabbits but flare okay. camera um absolute zero can you explain that because um absolute you know it's zero is a scientific why, why scientific. should it, is it different than you know oh, or why yeah. Should, yeah okay well oh, a flare sorry, camera works like um so. An infrared, if you, you know those infrared motion detectors you have in burglar alarm systems? Yes. Exactly. The same. Or, or the infrared thermometers that you point at ghosts in the corners of rooms. Yes. The principle yeah. is, is very similar. It uses a modified version of a camera sensor. And instead yeah. of it being sensitive, um, it's not just the sensor that's modified, the lens array has to be. 
um, but it can't see visible light. This sensor um, can only see infrared, but not the infrared that our infrared cameras see. It's even further into the infrared spectrum yes. because uh, absolute zero, which is a scientific or a, a principle where it's actually minus 273 degrees Celsius, which is zero yes. degrees Kelvin. Um, no, there is no infrared thermal energy emitted. Uh, so anything above that is above that temperature, by definition, will emit thermal energy. In the yes. it's an electromagnetic energy in the infrared portion of the spectrum that these systems are set up to to pick up. Um, a thermal imager looks at a portion of that spectrum, depending upon how much you've spent on it and the sensitivity and the specifications and the physical size of the sensor and the lenses and a whole lot of other stuff. But basically, yeah. it's looking at thermal energy in much the same way as a motion detector senses a hot cat or a person or a spider crossing it, it there is a temperature difference and in a in an alarm it goes something's different and it sets the alarm off well in the thermal imager it takes um a signal from every one of the pixels on the sensor and builds it into a visual representation a what's called a thermograph it's similar to a photograph which is built using light frequencies that we can see um and that's basically a thermal imaging camera yes good one um so anything it, like even, like even it, a bug gives off a, off a heat signature even a cold everything does. does everything does everything everything so, that is above absolute zero now your camera you, you know so if, if something doesn't give off a heat signature does that necessarily no, if it no, because it must um but it, it yeah must, what you do find, though, is that people that have spent $300 on a thermal imaging camera may not see it because the camera yeah. isn't sensitive enough to see it. Yeah. Whereas if you spend $30,000, the camera will see it because it's more sensitive. It's kind of like if you go outside and stand in your um, garden, if you're in a if you're in an area, you know, a suburban area away from street lighting and you look yeah. up and see the Milky Way, you can see millions of stars. And if you stand in the middle of the city and you look up, you can might see the moon because the background is affecting your sensitivity. So it's kind of like that. The bigger the sensor, the more pixels it has, the way it's set up. So it's not that the camera isn't seeing it. It's just that the camera can't see, see it. It's still yeah. there. The camera, it's invisible to the camera. Yeah. Um, and actually, I guess, cause, good Lord, it's been an hour and a half already. Shit. Um, um, phone apps. I mean, you use an i14 for things. So what, uh, what sort of things do you use and what can they do? Everything. Because, and it's a fantastic ghost hunting tool, if you yeah. turn off all of the ghost hunting apps yes, and all of the nonsense, what you've got, what you're left with is, a, is quite a powerful little computer that has got a 4K, very good low light camera, a 4K, um, a high resolution video camera that's good in low light. You've yeah. got near broadcast quality audio. You have got a barometer. You've got motion sensors. You've got an accelerometer. You've got with the 14, you've got LiDAR. You've got a whole raft of sensors. A lot of, or, you can plug them into the to the ports at the bottom of the phone so you can connect sensitive thermometers and other devices. So instead of having to carry around huge bags and boxes of equipment. You've got a tiny little thing. You've got a tiny little thing that you're more likely to have in your pocket. And yes. afterwards, you can send all of the data really quickly to your computer um, so that you can you can look at it in more detail. Yeah. Now, um, it's there's a what 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 other sort of things? Um, accelerometers to use. What um, you know, um, well, accelerometers. Um, I mean, 
movement. We, um, I don't yeah. know. Um, I've got your book here. I've got the. I've, by the way, you like the bookmark? Alex bought it for me. It's a little claw. Cool. Very <laughs> nice. yeah. yeah, but um, yeah. What other sort of things are on your phone? <laughs> um, but you can. If, if somebody says um, the table was moving and tilting, yes, then there are using the native apps on the phone the accelerometers yes then you can measure that to a very very high degree of precision if people are saying that um let me think of another one that the you know that the cheap ear there's the magnetometers are so sensitive they can measure changes in the, in the magnetic field yes so it's it's way more accurate than a fifty dollar EMF meter or a mel meter. What are your thoughts on the tri field natural? Do you use one of those? Oh. You know, I mean, that's not on the phone. That's just that's a cool. natural. Yes, um, um, yeah, but so that would be sort of a well. Tri field is actually quite a unique device because yes. um, the tri field natural EMF is a, is quite an interesting device. Yes, I've got one of those and does have potentially some use because. It, it doesn't actually measure the amount of electromagnetism. Yes. What it does is measure the amount of change in the electromagnetism. So if you move it quickly through a magnetic field, such as the Earth's magnetic field, it will show a very high reading because... It will maybe go... Because... Exactly. Yes. So it is a good indicator of rapid changing magnetic electromagnetic or magnetic fields yes so that's so, what it, that's that's why it's potentially useful but all of these other emf meters yes are flashy beacons. flashy beacons. there's there's one very I for pke experiments and you know wtf moment stuff but aside from that well the problem with emf and emf meters and all yes. of these ghost meters that use electromagnetism Yes. is they they don't provide you with useful information yes because there are two things that you need to know about an electromagnetic field yes you need to know its amplitude so how much is it you yes. know how much of of how many electromagnetic magic moonbeams are there and and what the the source of them is now if you have a meter and they are available. They're, they're moderately expensive, but they're a lot cheaper than when we bought our first ones. Um, you, If you have a meter that can tell you the amplitude and the frequency, the frequency is effectively the DNA, the fingerprint of the electromagnetic signal. So you can find the source in moments because invariably... Most of the time, it will be a radio frequency yes. uh, signal, and people say, "But, but there were no radios nearby. We were in the middle of the country, and we turned off all the electricity." Yes, but you didn't sh you didn't sh um, switch off Voice of China or the BBC World Service. Yes, because if you're if you're in the middle of the country and you turn on your transistor radio and you can hear a radio, you know, a radio broadcast. Yes, then there is electromagnetic radio frequencies there. Yes, and I mean, I guess that would maybe fall into maybe the Schumann resonances because they carry that sort of stuff, don't they? Well, they're... they're, they're or they, I mean, they're, they're the Earth's natural, the baseline is the Earth's. I don't, think, I don't think we need to look that far, you know. I, it's, it's one of my favourite things, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't think we need to look quite so esoterically as an explanation when we have, uh, you know, Radio China International. Voice of America, the BBC yeah. World Service. Um, Clean and obvious. <laughs> yeah, because you know these megawatt transmitters are designed to broadcast their signal around the world. Yes. And if you can hear it, your EMF meter can can respond to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, good lord. Oh, geez, an hour and a half. Damn, I'm really enjoying this. Um, I know you've got to get your new gun soon. Um, I'm, I'm, 
Eastern, Western, uh, you talked on your show with Ron the other week, which was a really good one, by the way, about how Eastern and Western people perceive ghosts differently. And could we touch on that? Because yeah. I... Um, yeah. so it's not Eastern and Western, it's cultural. Um, yeah, cultural. So that's what I mean. It's, yeah. For example... No. Um, like the Chinese ghosts and the Middle Eastern ones and the, you know... Oh. Um, we we see the ghost we expect to see or we report the ghost we expect to report what's it what's also interesting is if you go into europe um because ghost hunting is it's not unique there are ghost investigators all over the world in many Sorry. many countries but it is um historically it has always been more of a thing in english speaking uh, countries so yeah. australia uh the united kingdom <laughs> australia America, canada because we yeah. share a common language and so we share kind of common ghosts yeah when you go to france germany norway sweden they have ghosts yeah. too but they're different ghosts and people don't get quite as wildly excited there are there are not yeah. many ghost hunting groups in sweden or in Norway or in Italy. There are some, but yeah. as a society, they're not that interested. But um, do they do people view them differently? I mean you absolutely if you look at in in the West, in the West English speaking um in fact, no, in the Western sort of hemisphere, hmm. um, ghosts tend to conform to the kind of stereotypical uh casper the white vaporous floaty you know the halloween ghost that we all know yes and... with the holes for the eyes and yeah. if you showed that to someone from japan yes china vietnam um and they may be familiar with western culture but ordinarily you know go back a few a few decades um and they'd look at it and go what's that is that a yes. bed you know, it's like, don't recognize it because their ghosts are much more human in form, but have yes. very grotesque sort of, you know, yes. grotesque faces. Like the big noses and the um, sort of big snarly teeth. And, yes, and, and the when we when we worked with the Japanese, um, we realized that there was a big cultural difference in that um, they they were they the reason they'd come over is to look at these crackpot British people who spend their time looking for ghosts. Because in Japan, a ghost isn't something that you want to become involved with. You want to stay away from it as, as far as possible because they're not pleasant. Um, yes. You know, they're, 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 they're not intrinsically evil, but you don't want to tangle with them. They, they, these orai, as the Japanese call them, are something that you would sort of keep at arm's length and make offerings to. Yes. And yet these crazy, these crazy Westerners were, oh, we want to hunt them down and look for them. Yes. So, again, and in, and in other cultures, um, I was talking to someone from um, the Middle East and their, their belief, yeah. was, they were saying, well, why, why do you look for ghosts? Because they exist. Yes. You know, we, we know our ancestors are, you know, their cultural approach is very different again. Yes. And we want you, understanding, I guess. They're, they're kind of bewildered that we're, we're even bothered because they're brought up to, to accept that these things are just part of the fabric of the universe. Yeah. You know, yeah, like I mean, spiders are in Australia. <laughs> and um, the other deadly wildlife, we won't go there. I can tell you about that um, in a few weeks, I dare say. Um, good God, um... What else was I going to say? Um, bloody hell. Um, um, Jesus, I've got, well, I've got your whole entire book here. And I've got it all. I've got the whole. Oh, you've got so much in your book. Guys, buy Ghostology, please. And the guy. Have you done the word search? Sorry? Have you done the word search? The word search? Hmm. Is there a word search? No, I don't fill in things in books. I don't fill in things. Is there I a would... word? Turn to the back pages. I, 
hang on. No, there's no. I there's not. A, I've got a crossword book. There's not a word search. There, there is. is. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, there bloody is. Ah, well, bloody hell. And your reading list in there as well. Yes, all the night side of nature and everything. I haven't done the word search. I like word searches, but I wouldn't circle stuff. That's disrespectful. It's a book. It's a damn good one. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it's... But yeah, I mean... Um... The reason for the word search came about because somebody said, you know, why don't you put the plans of, or a dot to dot of a... It, it's like the front cover of Ghostology, you know, because I think... I actually you, like it. Actually, here it is. If you take everything too seriously in life... Yes. There is a danger that you can end up with your head up your own arse. Yes. And, I mean, it's not... You know, I, I, I am passionate about what I do, but it doesn't define who I am. Yes. You know, life should be a little bit fun. And so... The yes. cover of Ghostology and indeed Paracoustics reflects that. Yes. And, and the inclusion of a word, word search. There was a spare page. I could have written another three paragraphs or, you know, or let's have a bit of fun with life. Ghostology well, also contains another Easter egg. If you go to the very back cover. Oh, no. You spot it? No. Um, well, we'll just change the edition on that one. But there is a there is a page. Sorry. It must be at the front. There is a page um, of people saying what a good book it is. Well, it is. It's a no. Isn't... There is inside it. There is. There's a page of um, recommendations somewhere, right at the start somewhere, I think. And Winston's got something in there, and. Um... I think it says um, straight it says to chapter one, a brief history of um, um it says this was a, oh sorry no it's paracoustics paracoustics oh, bloody hell wrong bloody book yeah it says it says this is an uplifting read by daniel d hume daniel d hume yeah it's kind of like if you know you know it was it daniel was kind of, that's not daniel that's not the medium who floated out. Daniel of Douglas. Daniel Douglas. Douglas Hume. Yeah. yeah. Yes. An uplifting read because he was famous for levitation. Yes, I've got so many blasted books. I haven't read it for God. I haven't read it for a while. Actually, I've I've been researching stuff. Yes, but good Lord, um. So we have it, ladies and gentlemen, an admission from our host that she hasn't read the bloody book. I read the bloody thing for God's sakes. I just you haven't read it for a while. There's a word search in it. Come on. Oh, shush you, I have read it. It's a damn good book. Except the last page with the word search on it. Yeah, but I don't, I wouldn't draw on your book. I you wouldn't. didn't know it was there. I haven't read it for ages. I, I've been through the first few. I've been through most of this. I can go right to the back, for God's sakes. There's, al there's also a slightly tongue-in-cheek photograph I slung into the book as well. And the what? Which one? Well, I'm not going to tell you. But there's also, a, there's also a slightly tongue-in-cheek photograph that I included. You're a difficult bastard. I, I, there's so many I've got, pictures. We've got to, life's too short not to have a bit of fun. But one and, of the and there's stats and those hurt my head. But I know it is. But it's there's not. No I don't. I don't. I've got. I've got historical costumes, but I won't do party hats and whistles and feather boas and there's, stuff. There are no stats in ghostology. It's written for. Um, oh, there's something I don't know. There was a, there's a, oh, no, it's a Beaufort scale and a wind speed thingy, but um, yes, there's some. Um, there's, oh, I can't, there's photos. There's a guy at a computer screen. There's a George Meek with the Spiricon. That's a what? That's George Meek with the Spiricon machine. Okay, yeah, I couldn't, I can't, it's, I've got dim lighting here. There's, Jesus H, there's the brown lady, there's there's the ghost of Lord Combermere with a question mark. Mm -hmm. There's a... My copy's got a tea stain on the front cover. Sorry? My copy's got a tea stain ring mark from a, 
a teacup on the front cover. Oh, that is what is the oh, uh, is there you're not going to give me a hint, are you? No, no, Ron, Ron spotted it straight away. I, I, uh, it's the only one he's ever spotted, mind. Knocked a visor to Sir Oliver Lodge, Jesus, yeah. hey. back in back in the uh before the Second World War. Um, they were talking about infrared video, uh, video. Wow. And Holy Lodge, shit. Yeah, but you see, the interesting thing is Lodge didn't realise what he was looking at, which always struck me as astonishing, given he was such a clever man. He didn't realise he was looking at infrared video camera because that's what the knock divisor was. Wow. Or could be used for. Wow. I dare say there's none of those that exist. And what's the... Oh, no, you're not going to tell me about it. There is in the Science Museum in London. Huh? A knock divisor. There's one in the Science Museum. Not on display. There's but an they do have one. There's they an do. iPhone app ghost. Yep. I made that. that. That's not the Easter. I can't I, do... I, that photo. I can't Photoshop. I can't Photoshop to save my life. If someone held a gun to my head, I could not Photoshop. There's these... I just, there's, there's so bloody many. Folks, buy this book, please. There's the, from the Orb Experiment. I want to give my team homework, you know, a quiz maybe. Give them the words to do. Well, I, I, I'm not going to draw it, but I will do that. I'll, I'll, I don't know, copy on tracing paper or something. But shit, Aaron 41, you've got to buy a gun, bloody hell. Yeah, Don't kill rabbits. Or if you do, you can have my share of rabbit. I one, one last question because Mark is getting getting tired in New Zealand. Mark? Yeah, he's getting tired. Ah, oh, I can't see him. He he last said it ages ago that he was really enjoying this, but I can't see anybody at the probably moment. I can't. He's probably nodded off. I he probably has. I don't know if it's earlier or later or there. I can't remember. One last question. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Um can we talk about what's maybe just a little hint about what's going on? Because we've now as of next year, us overseas have got um ASAP accredited accredited ASAP registered. Um, investigator training, but um, yeah, is there anything more going on with that? Because we need this, we really do. And from, I'm willing to chuck all my stuff in as much as I can. From next spring, yes. the ASAP training, or there's two levels to it the accredited investigator level and registered investigator. Now, you, you can't go on to the ASAP register if you're overseas because the register requires insurances and the insurance only covers the UK and Wales. Yes. Um, but you can you can still do the training and gain and this. It shows you're knowledgeable. And stuff. Well, you can still gain the accreditation. Yes. Um, but you wouldn't be able to investigate on behalf of ASAP because yes. of legal problems. Yes. But that's all that's going to be made available online to ASAP members wherever they are in the world. Who's going to be teaching that? Are you going to be part of it? And Cal and Kev and Beth and No, just me. Just you. Oh, that's so cool. I well, originally I... thought it was Nori because because I didn't know was I just said I... hello, whoever you are. I didn't know who it was. Well, as a training officer, it's my job to to get people through training yeah. and one of the things that i was aware of is that for different reasons even inside the uk people can't get to the training um events I because mean, I they can't gotta... travel um health work family whatever cost yeah and so but we have this wonderful system called online um, and so we can put the training modules online. It took it took a yeah. lot of work to convert them from face to face to an online format, yeah. and it was really kind of experimental when we started. Um, but we we the plan is 
that they will start in the spring. First of all, with the AAI accreditation level, and then that will move forward into the... So it will probably be six weekly one-hour webinars followed by some coursework, which is submitted. That's so cool. And then, and then uh, the same again for the ARI level course. That's but so it's not, so it's not just sit there and listen and pretend that you're, you know, you will have to submit stuff as well. Yes, no, for God's sakes, don't do that. Because, because otherwise we won't know if you've paid any attention or whether you've, um, you know, we've got... Yeah, it could be like cheating and say that cat balls are talking to ghosts, you know. You can only be assessed by... Yeah. Yeah, so to help us assess individuals and to whether they've reached the the standards that ASAP have set, then we have to, it's like a two-way street. So it's kind of like, you know, doing any other education yes. course. There yes. are not tests. Well, not exams, but tests. And yes, that's so cool. I, though. I, I, I actually like those. That's the sort of test I like. That's I've made it difficult for people to fail, but people can fail. I I hope I won't. I don't think I'll I just, will. But... You know, it's not designed to make people fail. Yeah. But if you're not going to do the work, then inevitably yeah. you, have you will fail. Learn. You have to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But so far, <laughs> we've got 16, no, 24 people through the first course. Through the, but that is that just England and Wales so far, not overseas? Or? At the moment, nothing overseas. Um, so it opens up next year to us overseas? Well, it opens up to everybody online. Everybody yes. overseas in outside and of England. It doesn't matter where they are. They can be in England. It doesn't matter. And England, yes, true, true. You, you true can't, because we, we recommend face-to-face, -face, but if you physically I can't... I thought a lot of England, I thought a lot of ASAP would have done that already. Um, well, the problem yeah. is people have got lives. Yeah. You know, and there is a cost of living crisis as the politicians... Yeah. Can uh, to a recession soon. People have, got, so. people have got families, people have got... You know, some people through yeah. health reasons can't travel. And we yeah. don't want to excluded um yeah. so out of the first 20 something that um attended in person for the first one we had a single failure but that wasn't failure um that they failed because they didn't bother to submit anything yeah so you know i can't assess them so you can't be given a uh, you know you can't be passed if you're not going to put anything in yeah I love that sort of stuff. But are oh, you sniffling? You still got that bug? We've got a little bit. Yeah, you sound a bit sniffly. But I've got to let you go, dear. Good oh, Lord. It's, it was, yeah. We've been an hour and 40 bloody seven minutes already. Hello, babbling you, away. How are you feeling? Yeah, how are you feeling? Yeah. Freaking awesome time. You know, talking. Talking. Is Beth or, um, I mean, you've had some brilliant guests. You've got, you know, like, I mean, there are some fantastic real gold standards. I Kev don't know. I don't Kev know how. Kev I don't Kev know how I did it. But um, I don't know how I did it, but I just, I just, I just. Oh, Beth. good lord! I made a typo in my head, head header for the thing I just noticed. I don't know how I did it, but I, I just, I reached out to you. I like learning. I like reaching out. I like your opinions. Well, as I always say, I like hearing your experiences and what you've done and what you've learned and and what you can pass on and and that sort of thing. But that leads us to though, plug yourself, please. Tell people again where to find you if you weren't doing that while you were cracking jokes about my breaking wind while I was in the other room. Um, if people want to uh, listen to more of this crap, they can go to Ghost Chronicles International. Oh. It's on www.toginet.com on the yes. Wednesday, 11 p.m. till midnight UK time, which is 6 or 7 Eastern in America. Um, you could go to um, Parascience, which is parascience.org.uk. And if you want to find out a little bit more about some of the sort of things that I do day to day. Although that yes. means the thing. There is the ghost hunter, all one word, dot webs, W E B S dot com. Oh. Rain. Storms. 
Rain is expected to stop in 15 minutes. Well, that's good. Ah. We haven't actually had the storm here yet. Um, yeah, I've actually, I've actually, I better let you go, dear, though. You've got yeah. stuff to do. And I've got, I've yeah. got beef and ale pies to bake. I made pastry. Mm -hmm. And I've got beef and ale pies to bake with mashed potato topping, and I've, um, I'll get that stuff done. Eat some dinner, and it's, it's ten to nine here, and that's around my dinner time. And I'm sure you've got a heap of stuff to do, and you're mega busy, mega Not busy. Yeah, are you in? Are you in or anything else upcoming? Just before we go, are you in or on anything else upcoming yet? I've got the SPR conference next month. I've got an ASAP training day next month. We've got Halloween stuff. The me this is the time of year when all of the local newspapers and radio shows want a few words for Halloween. Christmas for ghost hunters. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you'd pay, though. Um, anyway, yeah, no. So there you go. Um, and, of course, what keeps me busiest of all is running the family in the house because, you know, I work from home. My wife works full time out of the home, so mm -hmm. it's, I I get to um, my, I'm in charge of getting th people to school, getting them in the house, feeding the little bastards. <laughs> you know, well, well, I want you to come over here sometime, but please don't sell them. What the kids? Yes. Why? <laughs> Why? When my son, when my son was six months old, I stuck him in a a buggy outside a supermarket with a sign on him. <laughs> you evil genius! You <laughs> actually, well, it it was quite cool. good home. <laughs> oh, we wanted money for him. Um, the, the reason for that was. Um, because we were coming up to Christmas and somewhat inevitably um, he has an unusual middle name. Um, both of the boys do. And um, his middle name is Jesus. Okay. So he was six months old. We, you know, nat nat Whatever. Nat nativity, you know, school nativity plays. Anybody want the real baby Jesus for Christmas? <laughs> Starring your play? That's so brother, cool. His brother's middle name. Well, you know, people say, "Why is your son called Jesus?" I should look for the son of God. Yeah. Um, Did you write him in a white swaddling cloth? <laughs> he has been, <laughs> and a manger. Um, <laughs> that's so gorgeous. All of the tropes have been done. Um, that's so gorgeous. Though. And is yeah, as a direct counterpoint, his brother, his middle name is Anakin. I like that too. You're a Star Wars fan, of course, hence the Lego ship that you, no. you're not. No, never seen it. I watched them when I was a kid, but um, was, yeah, I, he, got, he got the name Anakin because his sister, who also has a strange middle name, um, when you get the ultrasound photographs back, one of the ultrasounds was a head on view of his you know, head, and it looked yeah. like. And it looked just like Darth Vader's mask. <laughs> so um, we were actually going to call it, uh, give him the middle name of Vader. That's so sweet. So he was originally going to have the middle name of Vader um, because of this picture. That's uh, so sweet. And he, it got changed because Vader was a bit, but then, of course, Anakin. My nephew's called Odin. <laughs> I was going to be called Flora Euphemia. Ooh. But my mum intervened, thankfully. Think I, of the margin jokes I would have copped. I actually went to school with a girl uh, who was of Dutch ancestry. Yes. And her middle name was Chlamydia. Oh, no. Was it spelled the same? Um, no. Well, that's... It, good... it was pronounced the same. Oh, dear me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would have settled for Euphemia, actually. Um, given a choice between the two. Holy Jesus, it's um, sorry. It's time for you. Uh, oh, it's pie time. Pardon me. Yeah. I pie don't time. know how to do the thing, but pardon, oh, uh, pardon oh. the blasphemy, but it's it's pie time, beef and beer. Do you want the recipe? 
And that's why she had to sneak off midway through the show to break wind. No, I did not. I've been cooking pastry and filling, but I've got to put the, the filling the pies, the yeah. filling in the pie base, and put them in the oven and and yeah. cook my dinner and let you go and and do, do stuff. Yeah, do I'm stuff. off to do stuff. Have do a good stuff. day. Crack the whip and kill. What? Crack the whip and kill. Crack, yeah. crack the whip and kill. No, he likes it too much. Oh, oh, I. Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I'll show about, about, about that one day. Um, That's my turn to say TMI then. <laughs> if he doesn't give you the money. Right. Good night. God bless. All good righty. Good nighty. Good, good night, people. Good. good night to anyone who watched. Thank you so much. So, so, so much. Three. It's been awesome. And I'll talk to you again shortly. Yes. Bye bye. Bye de bye. Good night, folks. Okay, that's the Parsons, ladies and gents. This is Cat Ward, Cat in the Shadows, signing off. And goodbye to...